Have you ever wondered who is the very first person ever to send an email? Yeah, me neither. But the story of the first email is actually kind of interesting. Hi, I'm Brad Colbo, and that's what I'm talking about today, the history of email. So the very first person to send an email was Ray Tomlinson way back in 1971. Now, like a lot of things in technology, finding the very first person to create something or do something is a little convoluted. The idea of using a computer to send another person a message was nothing new. In 1971, it had been done for years. But there are a couple key reasons why we consider Ray Tomlinson to be the inventor of email. A lot of the conventions that he put in place in 1971 in his first email thing are still in place today. In order to send an email to somebody else on a different computer at the time, you needed that person's name and you also needed to know what computer they were on. You separated these two pieces of information by using the at symbol, something that we still use to this day. So what did that very first email say? According to Tomlinson, these test messages were entirely forgettable, and I have, therefore, forgotten them. Kind of like this Tomlinson guy. At the time that Tomlinson started working on email, he was working on a project called the ARPANET. What was that? It's me, Acronym Man. I'm here to help you with any acronyms that you come across in your show. Oh my gosh, how incredibly useful. A superhero who does nothing but solves acronyms. So let's have it. A ARPANET, what does it mean? A is for apartment. Uh, P is for penalty. What on earth? Hold on a second, my phone is loading it right- Ah, here we go. Advanced Research Projects Agency Network. ARPANET. All right, thanks acronym man. I'm not even gonna ask that guy for a definition. What's important to know is that the ARPANET ended up becoming what we know today as the internet. And over the next few years, we started to see email grow and evolve into what we know and kinda love today. In 1972, we get programs that can sort messages and allow users to reply and forward them on. In 1981, we get ASCII encoding that becomes the standard, the way of representing text within an email. By 1985, email was becoming commonplace in government and educational institutions. 1989, the first dial-up internet services start popping up. 1991, the first email sent from space. 1992, file attachments are born. 1998, the word spam says, screw this, I'm changing my meaning. 2004, the FTC gets jurisdiction over spam and completely solves the problem. What? That... That didn't work. But there was definitely a point in the early 70s when email really started to take off. One of the people working on the ARPANET at the time, Dave Crocker, puts it this way. My subjective sense was that the propagation of MSG, which was an email client at the time, resulted in an exponential explosion of email use over a roughly six month period of time. The simplistic explanation for this is that people can now close the Shannon Weaver communication loop with a single, simple command, rather than having to formulate each new message. In other words, Email moved from sending of independent messages into having a conversation. And what's important here wasn't that it was the first messaging system, it's that it was the first messaging system that people wanted to use. The real advancement here wasn't the messaging system itself, it was the answer button, it was the ability to reply, it was the ability to talk to other people. And when we think about technological advancement, we often think about features or specs, but what really matters is what we do with those features and specs. And that's a wrap with episode two. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you really enjoyed it, please share it with a friend. Thanks.